For today's group adventure, we find ourselves in the heart of Hollywood. Today we're visiting the legendary Whiskey A Go Go. We're going inside and we're going to tell stories. Now, surprisingly, not many people know this, that the Whiskey A Go Go is not spelled like your traditional whiskey, W-H-I-S-K-E-Y. Supposedly, the town, the city, refused to let any business be named after an alcohol, so they removed the E. So, Whiskey A Go Go is also known as the Whiskey. That's how it kind of gets the name. We're going to talk a little bit more about the name here in just a moment, but there's something I want to point out. I love that they have this, this plaque under glass. It says Whiskey A Go Go. Again, the E is gone. I don't know if you knew that, but now you do, watching The Grim Life. It says, since opening in 1964, the Whiskey A Go Go has been one of the world's most prominent and important rock and roll venues. Its stage, we're going to go on it too, has served as the launching pad for generations of music legends, including, and not limited to, Johnny Rivers, Frank Zappa, Love, The Doors. Well, we got a story about The, the Doors for you. Both of Springfield, Guns N' Roses, and Motley Crue. This is the Look at this, standing at the band load door. <sighs> I'm sure there's a band out there, a, a local band or a band that's just starting out, that just dreams about walking through this door into the Whiskey A Go Go. Now, here's the thing. We're gonna be sharing all kinds of different pictures that have been taken over the years, some of Blondie, of The Doors, uh, Patti Smith, the, I mean, you name it, we're gonna talk about it. Got some crazy stories about Guns N' Roses, Motley Crue, uh, The Doors, a really big one. I think that the cream of the crop, that cream was even here, uh, has to be The Doors. But keep this in mind, for every picture that we show you, we're gonna try our best to show you where the picture was taken. But time happens and they had to do some renovations, but it's still the same place, the Whiskey. Now, before we head inside the Whiskey A Go Go, I have to talk about the roof. Now, trust me, when we were planning this, I asked if we could have access to the roof, and because of liability reasons, we can't go up there. But way back in the day, one of the, the funniest, most interesting stories about this place, and there's a ton of them, we're gonna get into a few of them. Axl Rose, the front man to Guns N' Roses, when they were getting ready to sign their very first, their very first record deal, Axl Rose was nowhere to be found. He was missing. And the, the suits, they were waiting for him to come and sign his name, and the rest of the band members were waiting for him to come and sign his name. But supposedly, the story goes something like this. He lost his contacts. He couldn't find his contacts. And I don't know if it's because of drugs or alcohol or what. Axl, if you're watching this, maybe you can shed some light. He couldn't find his contacts, and the story goes, he was afraid that somebody stole his contacts so he couldn't read the fine print of his contract. Well, they searched for him, and in search of Axel Rose, they found his contacts in Axel's actual pocket. And where they found Axel Rose was at the top of the Whiskey A Go Go. He climbed up probably the fire escape at the time. There was no easy way up here. Now they have a, an indoor ladder that goes up there, but back then, you kind of had to scale the building. I'm talking like fire escape. And he was up here, and uh, they got him, they signed the contract, and the rest is history. The story goes. The thing about the Whiskey A Go Go is this. There are so many stories here, so many legends, iconic, and you never really know what to expect. I will say this, for all the stories that you know, all the stories that you read about, all the stories that are on the website for the whiskey, there's a lot more that have never been told, that will never see the light of day. This is the end. Now the fun thing about the Whiskey and Go Go, you don't have to come here for a concert, they actually have happy hour. You can come here and sit in some of these really nice red booths. You see a concert, this is like the VIP seating. This is where you want to sit with your group. But there's a picture that I'm going to show you right now of the band Blondie. Debbie Harry was actually sitting in this very last booth down here. 
with Chris Stein, right where Jessica is sitting now. And I can prove it. Here, let me get back here. Basically, I'm sitting right where the photographer was. Now you see the little indent, that alcove that has the Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey sign? But in this picture, it was taken, oh, if I'm not mistaken, 1979. There was a grate covering that. And she would have been standing here with her arms crossed and she kind of had this like, what the heck are you talking about? Look on her face, just like that. And uh, Chris Stein sitting there all cool with his sunglasses. Now if you didn't know this, here at the Grim Life Collective, we are big fans of the doors of Jim Morrison. We do a lot of different videos on them. Now, there's a picture that was taken of the band whenever they were here inside, and we're having a little hard time trying to line it up. I thought it was behind me. You can see that there's like this door. It's the band loading door, and there's a, a bar over here. I'm gonna show you some of these pictures on the wall. I thought the picture was taken over here, but after talking with some of the staff, we think it's on the other side of the the room here because of a like a, a sliding door you'll see what i mean all kinds of pictures on the wall over here a lot of them are signed but if you walk down this little alleyway right here you see the exit sign the kitchens to the left all of the wood back here by this door looks new so we're thinking that somewhere back here, if we can go back further in time, this is where Jim Morrison and the doors stood for that picture. It's gotta be it. There's only a couple different entrances to this building. This has to be that one. Speaking of the doors, look at that. Ray Manzarek, Robbie Krieger, John Densmore. Oh, this is just so cool. Let me back up a little bit so you can take it all in. Uh, probably what is the most famous story here at the Whiskey is of the Doors. Jim Morrison and the Doors, they were the house band here for three months, I think it was. And they did two sets. And the, one of the very last times they performed here, we're going to talk about different versions of the story, but the very last time Jim Morrison didn't show up for his first set. So the band went on stage and they played their set and then they left and they went to go find Jim and they found him wearing I think it was cowboy boots his underwear and a cowboy hat at the Tropicana Hotel he was like tripping out on LSD and uh, this is all according to Ray Manzarek mind you so they get him they bring him back here and he gets up here and they're playing and they have a set list every band you know they have this is what we're playing this time and one of the songs that they play always at the very end is called the end it's a very long song, so they get up here, and Ray Manzarek tells it that, you know, Jim's up there doing his thing, and he's basically hypnotizing the entire crowd. I'm going to back up and try to take this all in. And then he starts going into this crazy thing about his father and his mother, and I think they call it the Oedipus Rex. I'm not going to get too much into it, and you can find out, you know, this and that. And he started, uh, he screamed in an obscenity. And when the set was done, the owner of the club was like, listen, you're fired. You can't be doing that kind of stuff. You are foul. You are nasty. You cannot be here doing that. This is not that kind of establishment. You need to leave. Now let's just take a moment and let this sink in. Never mind the doors. Just think of all the different bands that have played here over the years, from Janis Joplin to freaking Joan Jett. I mean, it's insane, absolutely insane. The amount of people that were on the stage, the amount of people that sang, the amount of people that crowded in here, it blows my mind. All right, enough is enough. Let's do what we all came here for, and that's to go up here on the famous Whiskey A Go-Go stage. <laughs> it's like tiptoeing up. Impressive indeed. Just picture it 
right now where I'm standing, Jim Morrison performed here. Jim Morrison got banned from the whiskey standing up here doing his thing, talking about the end. Our next story comes to Janis Joplin, who performed here quite a bit. And on the very last time that she was actually here in the club, she was a big Southern Comfort drinker. And one of the workers, whenever she was here, they kept, she kept drinking. And uh, when she left, they actually gave her a case of Southern Comfort. Got in her car, went back to where she was staying, which is, I wouldn't say a couple blocks, it's a, it's a little further down the road here in Hollywood. She ended up dying that night. And the owner of the whiskey thought for many, many years that he was the one that actually caused her death. But it came to light that it was actually a mixture of drugs and a whole bunch of other stuff. The story of Janis Joplin is equally as legendary. At some point, we'll talk about that. But look at this. Standing, the Grim Life Collective standing on the stage of the whiskey. Let's see if we can get a shot of what it would look like if you were here performing. Oh, I see you. A little spooky girl. <laughs> so what's interesting about this place, it kind of reminds, I'm gonna nerd out here for a minute. It reminds me of Doctor Who, the TARDIS. It looks small from the outside, but once you're in it and you start walking amongst the layers, there's like one, two, three, technically like four floors here. But there's just a bunch of hidden places where you can come and watch a band. Also standing here on the stage, get a very good look at some of the doors stuff on the wall. It's a picture of Jim. Looks like he's got a halo above his head. And then this right here is a grave rubbing. James Douglas Morrison, 1943 to 1971 of his tombstone in Paris. Some more pictures on the wall over here. It kind of looks like a little bit of a shrine, doesn't it? Well, there's Jimi Hendrix as well. There's no plaques on the wall, but here's a leather jacket from LA Guns. Right next to that, we got Enough's the Enough, leather jacket from them. And this one over here says Johnny Love, Love Hate. Blackout in the Red Room. There's a picture of Lemmy over there in the corner. Truth be told, I don't want to leave the stage. Just getting the opportunity to stand here, where all of these acts performed. I mean, come on, Jim Morrison, The Doors, right? But there are more, more spots that we need to show you guys. And the first one being, well, the next one being is right up here at the top of the steps. And it's going to bring us to our next story. Now, if you look over this railing, you can see Jessica doing some go-go dancing and you're like, you're looking pretty good. You having fun? Now, the go-go dancer started here at the Whiskey A Go-Go. You see, back on opening night, the very first concert that was here, Johnny Winters was here playing on this very stage. And if, depending on what you read, again, stories, legends, the, the DJ, the person who was spinning the records, if you will, she was to the right of the stage and looking at other pictures, it looks like right over there by that bar, there used to be an entrance. You can see the exit sign. That is the, the stage of the band load in door. And on top of that, in pictures, you can see go-go dancers. Now this is one of the pictures that I always found very interesting. This gives you a perfect idea of how much things have changed. Now, as we talk about this, pay close attention to this support beam. It's still here. It's the only thing that can be seen in this photo. Now the stage, make note where it's at right now, but back in, I don't know, 1966, there was a photo that was taken at a Frank Zappa concert whenever he was here. And you can see the, the stage is back a little bit, but you can see that door and all the go-go dancers up there above this platform. That's what it looks like now.
person up there spinning records, she would play the music and then she would dance. And that is how go-go dancing started. Go-go dancers. Moving on up here on the second floor, there's a bar, there's a, a balcony, there's seating. And you guessed it, all the go-go dancers were up here. Now, right over where Jessica is standing right now, I'm sorry, where Jessica is dancing, she's actually right next to the current sound booth. But if I come over this way, you can see the, the soundboard all lit up. The current sound booth for the Whiskey O'Go-Go, -Go, this was one of the, the go-go dancing booths. And talk about a view of the stage, right? And then the balcony and the booths where the girls were dancing wraps around. <laughs> Jessica, you're having way too much fun with this. Now what's crazy about this, if you go way back and you look at old pictures of the whiskey, at the very beginning, it looks like this balcony probably wasn't even here. Instead, it was almost like stadium seating. And the, the floor, the dance floor, it looks, what is that, linoleum? But back then it looked like it was wooden. I'm gonna see if I can find it, but there's an interview where there is a woman who was, who was one of the dancers and she was talking about how dancing here at the Whiskey was very free. And they called it like freestyle dancing. And it was something different. And they, everybody can do it here and they can stand apart from each other and just kind of go wild and have fun. Very often yeah. in the old-fashioned style of dancing, we, uh, we may not feel particularly in a romantic mood, and yet very often our partner would grab us and dance very close and hold us so closely. And I like this because, you know, we can completely keep it arm's length and dance however we please, and uh, I really like that. <laughs> I think that's about it for the stories down here and the places that are open to the public. Now we're gonna go up to the third floor. The only way to get up here is to be a member of the staff or one of the bands. This is the end, beautiful Now we're having a special look at some of the green rooms. There's three up here, up here on the third floor. And the first one we're gonna to go to is this one right here. This is for the main acts, the headliners. So anybody who was here, like, I don't know, The Doors, Jimi Hendrix, Blondie, there's actually pictures of Blondie in this room. And of course, just like everything else, I mean, history, you gotta preserve everything. So things have changed quite a bit. But can you imagine, like right now, we are standing where a lot of our favorite musicians, like legendary musicians would come here and they would hang out up here watching something on the VHS that's right behind you, right before they're about to perform. This is... This I have is, goosebumps. Right? I got goosebumps. This, yeah. is, this is cool. When we walked in, you might have noticed this off in the distance. I'm going to show it to you right now. This place, the entire third floor, there are signatures all over the wall of different people that have played here, different bands. Every room is filled. We're gonna, we're gonna point out a few of them. At some point before we leave, we're gonna have to sign it ourselves. The Grim Life Collective and Michael and Jessica inside the Whiskey A Go Go for eternity. Well, until they paint it, and then the next generation comes in, the next band. I love it. This is really cool. Talk about Hollywood history, right? Hollywood and music history. 
even though they paint the rooms and things change, it looks like they're keeping some of the signatures original. You know, they paint around it, they kind of frame it like Aaron Carter right here. This framed portion of the wall, can't read it, but it does say rat. And then up here in the corner, striper and possessed. Oh, that's kind of comical. This kind of caught my eye. It's an art piece, a print, Crazy Times, 2022. You can see Sammy Hagar's signature right there. And here's a picture of Sammy Hagar standing there in shorts. It says Crazy Times. But if you follow YouTube, doesn't he kind of look like Casey Neistat in this picture? I can see that. Oh, baby ghoul. Inside the whiskey a go, go what's going through your mind? Like, what are you feeling right now? I mean, we've been to some pretty legendary, iconic places, but nothing like this. It's like living history. It's like watching a monster sleep because it's so quiet and it's so still. And you know that at any moment, the shoe's gonna drop, right? Like the, the amps are gonna turn on, the lights are gonna turn on, the crowds will be roaring and the band will be so loud and you'll be, just electric. Can you feel the electricity? I can, yeah, I can. It's awesome. So if that was the headlining room, this is opening act room. One of them, there's two for the opening acts. And sometimes they would have like five, six, seven bands and they all have to share this. I guess it's, it's part of the experience, right? Can you imagine just being in here? Hey, again, the walls are just covered. It's something else. I'm sure if you pause the screen and you look closely, I'm sure you can find a band that you know. And what's interesting about this, not only have they painted the walls over time, but now there is like this protective plywood that's up. So they can just kind of put it up and take it down whenever they need and just kind of preserve history. I like this one over here. I don't even know what the band is, White Rabbit, Ruby Nash. And now for the very last green room, and it's probably the smallest of them all, but don't let that fool you because history is history and this place is definitely filled with it. It's beautiful, right? Yeah, it really is. Now there's a few things that we're gonna point out. There are posters, but there are a few different things here on the wall that trust me, you're gonna to wanna to see. The first thing that really sticks out is this one here. It says Lincoln Park darts. And it looks like they tried to protect it in some way, shape, or form. Like they painted around the room, but they left this here. One of the first things Jessica noticed when she came into this room were a couple posters for 45 Grave, and this one here is actually signed. Inside these rooms, these green rooms, so many different pictures can be found online. So if you do like research of the Whiskey A Go Go here on Sunset Boulevard and bands like Blondie and Iggy Pop and Patti Smith all were taken inside these rooms. If these walls could talk. Feel free to stop this video at any time and just read the signatures and the band names, especially that Jack Daniel sign, and start it up whenever you're ready. Because there's just so much to look at. Never in a million years did I ever think I'd get a chance, an opportunity to do something like this, let alone live in Hollywood. But to be able to walk through the whiskey a go go, the whiskey, and sign the Grim Life Collective. And I think because there's movies over here, we're gonna do it right here.
a little hard to write. Now, I would think that unless they're going to move the VHS tapes, maybe this one will be here for quite some time. Let me get the camera back here so you can see it. There it is. It looks like some sort of haunting scratch on the wall. <laughs> Perfect. If you are a band and you're coming here to the Whiskey A Go Go and you're in this room and you see this, take a picture and tag us. It'd be fun, right? With that being said, from the Whiskey here in Hollywood, thank you for joining us on another Grim Adventure. This time, oh, an extra special happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck It's come in my way Wherever I go, hard luck Is that it stay? Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way